Now, if you've been reading the tea leaves here, you're also noticing that this gets down to another fundamental truth. And that Facebook ads do the targeting. There is no benefit to using Facebook ads to uh, audiences to improve your AOV. There's no correlation. There's no correlation between LTV and a custom audience or an interest group or some detailed targeting. As a matter of fact, you are more likely to see less stable, less desirable, lower incremental lift when you are using detailed targeting instead of letting that ad go out unabated and be shown to all of the people that that ad should be shown to. Because remember, Facebook has looked at the click-through rate, the bounce rate, the stickiness, the engagement rate, how well people respond to that content versus some other option. And because of that, Facebook is choosing who else to show it to. Now, organically, this is the people that are following you or the people that have liked your page or the people that are in your group. What are they seeing? We also see very aggressively and something that TikTok moved forward more aggressively than anyone taking what YouTube was doing beforehand and push the needle to the 10,000th degree. And Facebook is getting a lot better at it. We're seeing reels from accounts that you've never seen before. But because of all of the other content you've engaged with, Facebook thinks you might like to see this. And that's why you could have 100 followers and get a reel, get a million views. It's not that your 100 followers watched them, you know, all that many times. It's that you were shown to way more people. In the same way that that reach, that view count, that engagement is a meritocracy on the content, the CPMs that you pay with your ads are the exact same type of conversation. If you make content and make ads and produce post IDs that people want to see in their newsfeed, that they engage positively with, that ultimately meets Facebook's business objectives, you are going to see lower and lower CPMs because the CPM is ultimately a tax on your business relationship with Facebook. And what this really means is every time you pay extra for detailed targeting, because remember, all detailed targeting costs extra. When you pay extra money to restrict and prevent those ads from being shown to everybody that wants to see it, what you're ultimately doing is forcing those ads to be shown to a larger number of people that don't necessarily want to respond positively to it because you said out of this 50,000 person or 5 million person audience, I want to make sure that you're showing it with this dollar amount. Now, ultimately, that ad at broad is going to run unrestricted. Every impression that is good for that ad will be delivered and you are going to win auctions that are far more desirable for your ad account for your business ultimately for the bottom line of whatever company that you're running ads for or yourself and because you're not forcing bad impressions on people you are allowing facebook to create better user experiences so you are one being more aligned with Facebook so that you don't have to worry about necessarily getting CPMs that are over 40, 50, a hundred dollars. That's not going to happen when you use something like this. Also, you're providing greater incremental lift to the rest of your business because instead of just focusing on this small group of people and paying way more to reach them, you can reach this much bigger group of people for a lot cheaper. And ultimately, that's going to help with your search volume. That's going to help with your email volume. That's going to help with the reach that your TikTok videos get. That's going to help with your email open rate because you're reaching a higher quality of people at a higher volume for a lower cost. Now, these are simple, basic business economics. These aren't arguable points. Some folks say, well, broad doesn't work for me. My reaction to that is you haven't tested ads that work at broad. 
you've only been able to make things work in a small little silo. And ultimately, if your business only works when you can't grow it, how good is your situation to begin with? If you have to rely on lookalike audiences and interest groups that pretty heavily overlap with the data set that you already have, and you're not growing the size of the pie by reaching a whole bunch of new people, then at some point, aren't you just basically working really hard to prevent the growth that you're looking for? And this is one reason why we don't use targeting audiences. Because also, and there's way more videos you can dive into on my channel about this stuff, way more podcasts, way more content, but audiences don't work like you think they do. Remember, an interest group is full of just as many people that feel negatively about that topic as those that feel positively. And one third of that audience is actually there by mistake because the interest group technology is a decade old. It was invented by Facebook to bring Google advertisers onto the platform 10 years ago. It was introduced in 2012. How good do you think 10 year old technology is in a rapidly changing digital marketplace. Especially when half of those people are in that interest group because they don't like something. And if one third of the people, even before you start, shouldn't even be there, that means two thirds of every dollar that you could potentially spend, two thirds of that entire group is actually bad for you. So if that audience is, say, 3 million people, there's maybe 1 million people that your ad should even be shown to. And now, hopefully, your post ID, the overlap of the people that that post ID where Facebook wants to show it to, because remember, Facebook is, is deciding who wants to see this and who doesn't. Basically, every ad makes its own lookalike audience. Again, that is an analogy and a hard fact. Not arguable. Anybody that disagrees with it, fine. You're wrong, but you can have that opinion. That's fine. Um, I've worked with the engineering department. This is literally how the product was designed. And Facebook has been telling us this for a decade. And everybody ripping off Facebook literally uses the exact same model to grow. TikTok is literally that exact same thing built to grow on that exact same principle. Create content. Get data on who likes it. Show it to more people who are likely to like it. Show it to more people that look like those that responded positively. Every ad is making its own look-alike audience. We literally just established that in an inarguable, hard data, objective fact function. So we can move on from that conversation. My point here is, if that available audience that you are using if the overlap, if the Venn diagram of the ads lookalike audience doesn't have a lot of overlap with that other 1 million people, you are spending a lot of time and effort and investing a lot of impressions to tell Facebook that you don't give a damn about their business model. And your CPMs are going to go up. Now, you're going to get some wins. And look where... There is an overlap is great. And maybe you get really solid performance right away. But is it scalable? Is that somebody that is incremental to your business? Knowing that broad or lookalikes or interest groups, literally every single impression available on Facebook is ultimately still a retargeting impression because Facebook has determined that you want to see this content because of other behavior that you've taken. Other websites you've been to, other words that you've used, other content that you've engaged with. Even if it is impression number one for your business, that impression is a retargeting ad to somebody else's journey. So with all of that being said, if you are dramatically reducing the scope of who you're allowing that ad to see by eliminating the large majority of the people that are in that ad's own lookalike audience by restricting it down to just the people in this 
in the lookalike audience that you've defined or in the interest group that you've defined or the retargeting audience that you've defined. When you paid extra to make it way more difficult for that ad to reach good impressions and ultimately deliver Facebook's business model, which puts you in a good relationship that sets you up for long-term success, when you have paid extra to do worse quality work and you win by getting sales, my argument is this. One, is that sustainable and scalable? The answer is always no. Number two, would that person have bought it anyway? Is it incremental? Are you using branded search and bottom of the funnel retargeting and email and influencer and working on organic? Do you need to do all of that stuff? Or more importantly, instead of introducing a thousand new people or 10,000 new people to the business, was it really a good investment to make sure that one person that was going to buy tomorrow still buys tomorrow? What is the opportunity cost of making your Facebook ad look good because you don't understand how the post ID makes an audience and ultimately and when you pay extra to make success more difficult, does that grow your business? Now, objectively speaking, the answer to that is no. So we can extrapolate from that very simple conversation that using targeting audiences, bad idea, hold stop. There's no use for them. You can get good results today. You can make Facebook look good, but ultimately the business will suffer because you're chasing vanity instead of performance. And if you're not building for the environment that curates good performance, Ultimately, you're going to struggle because you don't understand how Facebook works.